Designing effective cold runner systems is as important as designing a molded part. After optimizing the gate location for a new part design, the next step is to determine the best cold runner size. Cold runner size will influence overall part quality, molding cycle time, and overall profits. In this lesson, you will learn the factors to consider in cold runner designs, how to adjust cycle time with different gate runner designs, how different runner designs influence required injection pressures, cooling behavior, and clamp tonnages, how reduction in runner volume can save money. We have established that designing a cold runner system is an integral aspect to successful part and mold design. Now let's look at all of the factors that influence cold runner design. After optimizing a part's geometry, the next step is to identify critical material process characterizations that will influence sizing the cold runner. Material process characterizations include the shear sensitivity of the polymer, viscosity, and cooling behavior. Additionally, such factors as overall size of the part, maximum wall thickness, gate shape and locations, cycle time requirements, and the molding machine's available injection pressure and clamp tonnage capabilities must all be considered. In this lesson, we will try to find the best cycle time for a film-gated, four-cavity COC polymer molded biochip part. This part needs to have a uniform fill pattern to avoid shear-induced stress and flow marks. The first four-cavity design is shown on screen. We will be using a 25mm fan gate design with a 0.75mm gate thickness and a gate land length of 2mm. Let's start by watching the filling animation for this part. There are no fill-related issues and the injection pressure required to fill the part is about 70 MPa, which is well within the molding machine's capabilities. Taking a closer look at the injection pressure development during the filling process, here on the pressure graph, you can see a steep increase in pressure while the sprue is filled and then a steep increase when the fan gate is reached. After the material flows through the gates, the pressure curve smooths out, and increases while the part is filled. This pressure curve does not indicate any pressure spikes or dips that would be an issue with filling the cavity. Now let's move on to the cooling behavior for this part and runner system design. To get a better view, we are looking at a two-cavity close-up of the melt core animation. Here you can see the polymer cooling down. When the blue areas turn clear, the material is frozen. Based on this animation, the gate is freezing first at about 1.5 seconds into the packing phase. The next area to freeze is the fan gate at about 4 seconds, and then the thinner wall sections at 8 seconds. After 10 seconds, the entire part is frozen. But notice that the 6 mm diameter runner system is still molten. The longer cooling requirements for this runner system will increase the overall cycle time and affect the cost of the molded part. Clearly in this example, the runner system size is too large. The design needs to be changed to achieve faster cooling and cycle time. 